Hi, and welcome back for another edition of 10 for the Developers. We've got two such devs here, but before we get into it, I would like to start off by thanking all of the subscribers out there who make this content possible. All the extra shows and written material that we can release every month is thanks to their generous donations. We couldn't do it without them, so thank you. We're here inside the brand new CIG Los Angeles studio, which is coming together really nicely. It's still under construction, but every day it gets a little bit better, and it's incredible, the space we have now. Very exciting. And uh, we're in the fan cave. Yeah. Look at all this neat stuff. How much do you want one of those? I really want one of those. Going to find out. Maybe we can put a link down here. This isn't going to happen, but right here, this is where you can get your own. Just right. <laughs> no, put put uh, it in there. Do it. <laughs> so to introduce ourselves, we're the ones who are going to be talking. Uh, I'm Will Weisbaum. I'm the senior writer for Star Citizen. And with me is? I am Jeremiah Lee, the concept artist for Cloud Imperium Games in Los Angeles. So shall we get into it? Oh, that's great. Yeah, let's do it. So the first question comes from Perry Hope. How do you writers approach a new detail for yourself? Is it more like, bam, something comes in your mind and the creativity starts? Or do you guys have epic discussions with good old scotch and a massive Churchill cigar involved? Also, I'd like to see more stories about relations between the races. When will be your next stories? Or do you guys get authors to write about in-game stories? So to start off, um, I think the inspiration comes from a lot of places. A lot of times, you'll just be driving home and an idea will pop in your head and you'll come in really jazz and it'll just flow from you. But a lot of times having a creative job, mm -hmm. it's the job portion of it where you are actually, you know, you have to have the discipline to come in and write and generate ideas on demand and that's kind of the difficult part. Um, we all have an office together and it's really helpful to be able to turn around and toss out ideas. So sometimes we'll sit around and do brainstorm sessions or we use like shared documents to share ideas with each other. And that's a lifesaver. I don't know how it is with, you know, kind of as an artist, having that forced creativity come about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty similar, but no, uh, the difference would be is the writers would come up with kind of a a backbone for the visuals, right, for the concepts. And so, um, but we have to flesh those concepts out. Um, and sometimes the, the defi uh, how do you say, the definitions of a character or an idea are very kind of broad. So we'd have to fill those in. And that's where the creativity comes in, which is very close too. We, since we work so close with other artists, we kind of bounce back ideas. Sometimes like um, for the John Rhys Davies character, you and I, we. We chat, chatted quite a lot, actually, regarding just the, the outfit. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fun coming from it, from his background and how that translated right. into the materials or designs. Right, so I mean, art is pretty, it's pretty much similar. I mean, sometimes uh, we do have artist block. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh no, what do we do? It's due in two hours, but we don't know. So how do you get past your, your artist block? Um, for me, it's research. Okay. Um, there's a plethora of just information out there, and so, like if I'm designing a leather jacket, I don't just type in leather jacket on Google. Like I, I might. You should. Of, that'd probably be a good. Place yeah, that to would start. be. But like <laughs> if I want to do something original, um, I'd come up. I, I'd search for things that might be related. So I might do like maybe like motorcycle outfit, or like I don't know uh, World War II, and maybe if I see some cool shapes, I might implement it into like a leather jacket or something. So that's my way of kind of getting around the artist block. Yeah. Research can be very helpful to kind of take a break and do it. Up. Yeah. I, I find myself getting caught in research loops, though, because I love learning. Yes. So I'll start looking up stuff, and then like 10 minutes later, you're somewhere completely different on Wikipedia, and you're like, OK, I got to actually go back. And then probably the biggest thing I would say is, you know, it took me a while to learn, is even when you don't feel inspired or you feel like you don't have a good idea is just to put out whatever you do have in your head. Right. And oftentimes just dumping out that first <laughs> pass will let you be like, well, that's stupid, but this would be cool. And then you can revise from that. But staring at that blank sheet or blank canvas is the really oh daunting gosh, part. Yeah. So if you could just start filling that in with whatever, that's a huge grab. Um, and so uh, stories about the relationships between the races. Um, yeah, hopefully we we have a lot of discussions going on behind the scenes about the races and how they're going to 
the different alien species are going to interact with each other. And so we're planning on how we're going to roll out that content. Um, and we are still working with different various authors to generate material for um, the jump points mainly right now. So that's been a lot of fun working with those outside authors and getting their takes on things. So let's hop to one of your questions. Okay. Um, our second question is from Johnny underscore 71. Uh, I'm hoping to be a battlefield medic in game. As I understand it, the different armor types each have their own loadout maximums, similar to ship hard points. Will a medic have any type of visual identification that designates them as a medic, a medic variant, if you will? Um, so we do have currently uh, a concept, um, and it's still in production, uh, for a, uh, a Navy corpsman. So, we do have a medic, um, but I think this, I think Johnny is more talking about like, uh, like in the field type of medic. Yeah, when they're flying around right. in a cutlass red or. Right, right, or, that's what I'm thinking. So, um, so far we do not, but we do have the, we did design the insignias for the medics. And so we might, it could be a possibility of just slapping that that texture on? I mean, I think there's been discussions about having some customizability and the right. textures being able to right. decorate your armor in certain ways. So, you know, definitely a good option would be to have that kind of Red Cross insignia or whatever the version in, right, right, right. in the universe right. is so that you can role play as a medic and, you know, hopefully people won't shoot you. Or I'm sure <laughs> a lot of people will try to wear that armor and pretend they're a medic so they won't get shot, but then go around shooting other people anyway. Right. Just be really bad. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think we'll have like, uh, like StarCraft, their medics are like white. Yeah. Right? But that's just for a visual cue. But in real life, a lot of the medics in the field, they wear the, the regular BDUs and they wear the regular uh, gear that a regular soldier would wear, right? Um, just because we don't want the medics to stand out. So they might have a patch. Uh, on their left arm, I think, um, but they don't look necessarily any different. So, well, with, well I'll address a kind of, it kind of uh, segues to another question, so I'll say that for later, but we're planning on having our Marines very modular like our ships, so we could easily just swap like a shoulder piece out and be like, put like a medical uh, insignia on it. So it's in, it's, it could be in the works, not currently, because we have a lot more in, uh, important stuff, but it is a cool idea. Yeah, yeah, I mean, taking a look at what would make an armor set better for a medic. Right. Like, maybe they have more <clears throat> smaller compartments on the suit, like it would just be a general armor that can hold smaller things like metapens yes. at the sake of carrying around more weapons. So you're giving up the weapon slots to carry more metapens, and maybe that would be but it wouldn't have to be MediPens because of how flexible the system is supposed to right. be. It would just be that size storage. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how it develops and giving people the flexibility to kind of design the armor they want to wear. Right. <laughs> Question number three comes from Perry Hope. We got TNGS and we'll get TNG Star Marine. Very excited about that. Are you excited about Oh, it? super excited. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see the next great Star Citizen writer. I think we have some real talented writers upon us. Um, I think that's definitely true. I've been really enjoying the fan fiction that we get uh, on our side and on sister sites like INN, and we have a lot of fun reading through those. Um, I don't know if there'll be something like the next great Star Citizen writer, because, but we already have in place uh, a system in which people can submit work to us for consideration and inclusion in various things, mm -hmm. such as Jump Point or the site. Um, we're in the middle, uh, on our end, talking about how we can clean that up and make it a little more friendly for people visiting the site. So stay tuned, hopefully, for some word on that as, as we work through it on our end. But. We definitely enjoy that engagement with the community and drawing upon the awesome talent that's out there. Um, yeah, and just really getting a sense of what you want to role play and what you want to see in the universe. So we take that into account. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can touch on the next great Star Marine. I mean, we're going to have all these backer submitted armor. Concepts. I know, which I'm super excited about. I like, I see a lot of, I can remember, I don't want to, uh, no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> okay, I'll say it. So when we had that massive leak of all, like, 
uh, somebody got hold of our link yeah, and yeah, did yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. I saw <laughs> there was a fan and he literally just textured the bangle carrier. And after I saw that, I was like, oh, that sucks. But it's so cool. <laughs> so <laughs> every time I see the fan base come up with some sort of art, it just really, uh, really puts a smile on our faces, especially the artists, because it's just, uh, it, motivates us, it motivates us to um, I'll also make it better, <laughs> of course, because we can't. Uh, we have to live up to the hype and everything, and we want to make it, uh, we want to step up the quality bar. Uh, every time we see fans do really great artwork, it's just really, uh, yeah. I mean, with the amount of talent that we ended up being able to hire from the next right. great starship, that'll be kind of cool to see what influx of character artists we get from the next great star marine. So, all you. All right, so next question. Uh, from Kirian Akari, uh, in the early descriptions of potential armor classes, it was noted that pilots do not wear the heavier classes of suits. Are there any plans to make heavy armor prohibitive for flying a craft or staffing other stations? Yes. Um, currently for our game, um, I think it's the Light Marine is stationing a lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of our ships. And the reason why is um, just the size, uh, the pilots, not the pilots, the, uh, the light marine is pretty much our, almost our base male. And so when we, when we design our seats and everything, there's a specific size, right? And so a heavy marine will have a lot of gear and he won't fit in those specific, uh, those chairs. And also I was talking with Randy, I think a couple of days ago, and he was saying that a light marine is a certain height and the heavy marine is literally almost touching the, the ceiling of the, the cutlass, I think. Or, or, or some ships. So um, there will be limited access to pretty much the size of your armor. Um, so we, you won't necessarily see uh, a heavy marine driving a Merlin. Because we have like flight suits distinctly right. designed for pilots that exactly. don't have as much protection and are right. more flexible. So it might be the kind of thing that you have to literally suit up before you plan right. on heading into battle. Right. Or carry people who aren't pilots on your ship who exactly. are suited up to protect you. They're just cargo. <laughs> and, and I think we've talked about like potentially maybe uh, limiting what you can s physically sit down while you're right. wearing. Like if you have a giant gun strapped to your back, you might not be able to get into certain seats anyway without taking it off and putting it right. into storage before you go in. So that kind of role playing elements is pretty neat. Right, right. So to answer that question, it's really depends on the size of the character and depends on uh, the pretty much, if you have giant stuff on, you can't sit on a chair. Um, it's like, yeah. So Once we start allowing the mixing and matching of different pieces, it'll mm -hmm. see where that kind of breaking right, point Right, that's, like that's the scary part. Isn't <laughs> <it>? <laughs> You'll have to figure that I out. I know, we'll later. figure that out later. Um, well, yeah. yeah, really beefy legs and like <laughs> no shirt. That's how I'm gonna fly. How come I can't sit? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> Next question from Perry Hope. <laughs> uh, thanks for all the great questions, Perry Hope. Oh, they're great. Uh, we heard about the citizenship after finishing Squadron 42. Will the citizens have other clothes than civilians? So the really short answer is no. Uh, citizenship doesn't really denote that you're in a separate economic class or you're separate apart from the rest of civilians. They're very much part of the same group. It's, you know, a registered voter doesn't wear different clothes than a non-registered right. voter, except for on voting day where they get the little sticker. But other than that, it's pretty much straightforward. So um, you'd probably expect... Uh, did we mention that we're still under construction here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you would expect them to be shopping at the same kind of stores and buying the same clothes. Probably the biggest influence on what you're going to wear is, you know, or, or at least as far as NPCs is seeing where they live. That's kind of where we're going in, like mm -hmm. different styles coming from the cities where they're hanging out, the, the weather there and the economic standing there. Um, like you would expect people who live in New York City to dress differently than people who live here in Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to Will outside. It's like. Uh, even the off-duty uh, soldiers, the Marines, they don't wear their BDUs um, when they're off-duty. Um, they have to wear civilian clothing. So 
Um, that's why you see all those videos about stolen valor and stuff like that. <laughs> but like, there is a purpose for that. And so, um, especially when we're uh, tackling like military uh, type of roles, um, we're gonna try to stick to kind of real life uh, references. And so, no. <laughs> Short answer, no. <laughs> Um, next question. So, uh, hi, Jer from Daz C. Hi, Jeremiah. Can you tell us a bit about the power armor in terms of visuals and function? Also, how do you design it so it doesn't become the go-to endgame armor? Okay, so the first thing I would like to kind of clear up is Star Citizen is not like World of Warcraft. It's not like, oh, we're going to do this raid and then you get this raid armor. It's, it's, it's a completely different type of game. Um, so, um, we kind of, the way we're going to build our armor sets and our items and our clothing, uh, which kind of ties into another question, is uh, there's going to be different item slots for specific armor. And so, for instance, like the heavy armor will have a lot more slots, more item slots compared to the medium or the light. And so, it really depends on kind of what you decide to wear. But the thing is, the heavier armor you are, uh, the slower you might be, the less visibility you'll have. So there's always a pro and con. So there isn't necessarily the best armor suit, but there is the best armor suit for certain situations. So that would be, a, I think, a better term, uh, explanation of what the armor, power armor type of thing. So also in terms of visuals and functions. So we currently, as Chris mentioned, um, I think two Ten for the Chairmans ago, or three, when, I don't know when this airs. <laughs> um, he was talking about just the Marines and having like an undersuit and having items attached. And so we, uh, I just finished, I've been working on the Marines for like, I think a month or two. And so without any, without spoiling anything, we have a suit, like an undersuit and we have um, items attached to it. So like pieces will literally be attached to the undersuit. And so in terms of visuals, I concepted it so it looks like things can come off and on kind of quickly. Um, it's almost like uh, you're literally just attaching things. It's not like Lego. But no, like, it's like the Centurions. Right. <laughs> just we were talking earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Bonus points. If yes, you there you go. Reference. There you go. Um, um, so that's how, that's how I designed it. And I had to also take consideration of what type of item attachments they'll have, because uh, that determines kind of the, the forms of the shapes and also the rigging um, of how the character will move. I can't just put like 200 pound armor, <laughs> like shoulder pads, like World of Warcraft or, or, like, um, or like the Space Marines. Or like, you know, I can't, I can't do that because it restricts our movement. Um, so I have to take those into consideration. So a lot of those basic anatomy things and movement kind of determine how I shape these things. So. so do you get like a breakdown from design on like what a piece of armor needs to be able to hook into item-wise or like carry? Or? Um, well, for this, this character, what they kind of did was they gave me the basic requirements of this is what the suit is supposed to do, or this is what the light or the medium or the heavy will have to have, and I had to fill, fill in a lot of those stuff. Because a design, they, can, they give us as much information as they possibly can, but sometimes they can't give you the right answers because they don't build it, right? And I build it myself. I look under and over <laughs> and around, I'll be like, hey, we're missing this. And so, um, and also in terms of visuals, uh, a lot of reference. It's a lot of current day military and also uh, it's a lot of cool shapes like uh, movies like Blade Runner, um, Aliens, that type of stuff. So a long-winded answer, but yeah. <laughs> Next yeah. Question. I, yeah, definitely that balancing thing so that everything has positives and negatives mm -hmm. to it that, you know, it's you're really strong and really protected, but at what cost? Right. So, so our next question is from Eschatos. Sorry if I butchered it. Um, and also, uh, it's, it's almost the same quest question as Farseeker. So um, I'll just read Farseeker's question. Um, I know it has been mentioned that clothing, character equipment will have an item port system somewhat similar to ships. Can you give us any examples using specific clothing and other equipment? For example, will pocket serve as item ports? Not just be cosmetic. Uh, will wearing a pocketed vest over coveralls, spacesuit increase the number of items, small enough to fit the pockets of course one can carry? Also, can one have a holster for a pistol-sized weapon, not just on a belt? 
but between a shirt, duster, trench coat, or strap to a spacesuit thigh. So the way, um, I hope I'm right. I, I know I'm right. I think I'm right. Well, this is <laughs> your current thinking on the subject, yes. subject to change. Um, yes, but um, from what we have currently is that each suit or each, each uh, clothing uh, have a specific item slot. Now, we can't say that, oh, if my heavy marine chest piece, chest plate, has eight slots and I can stuff eight pistols, like this, that's not how it's gonna work, right? So each item slot will be specific for a specific size or a specific type of item. So for instance, um, instead of having six magazines, maybe you want uh, six med pens, for instance, for like the, like the question that Johnny71 asked, right? For, for in case of a medic, right? So that's how we're gonna do our item slots. And so um, when it comes to layer clothing though, uh, it's still in the works, and so that's not what um, we're not quite sure how we're going to tackle that necessarily, like dusters and stuff. We don't have space. Yeah, calories. trying to figure out the how pockets are going right. to work. I mean, it would be nice if there was a reason why you would change out of your t-shirt and jeans into work clothes because they provided you with extra storage for you know to put on that tool belt before you right. went out to go do your repair job. Right. So I mean, I think that's kind of an interesting layer, and you know, hopefully factoring in possibly how NPCs react to you based on what you're wearing is something we've right. started to look at potentially. So walking around town in your full armor might get you slightly different reactions than, right. you know, walking around in your sweet, sweet leather coat. <laughs> and I don't think we're going to necessarily approach it like kind of how uh, uh, MMORPGs kind of treat it like you have 36 item slots and so you can carry six bazookas and you're only wearing like a jacket. Like, I mean, like it doesn't really make sense. So um, we're still fleshing that part out, but I think the vision that we have is um, those item slots are kind of locked for specific item types and sizes. Because so. the way you're designing it, like, is everything visible right now? Yes. So like, if, you're, if you have three grenades, you can actually see those three That's grenades correct. on yourself. So I think that's going to carry over into a lot of things. Like maybe you'll have a backpack then if you want to schlep right. around a lot of stuff. Right. But um, that's really, I, I'm really excited about that, that you'll be able to like see it being depleted on a guy or be able exactly. to eye check a, an enemy and know if they have grenades. Right. Do you have any weapons on you? <laughs> I have like six, six grenades. No. <laughs> <laughs> like the way we have our Marines set up right now is we have the magnetic attachment points. And you can actually see those magnetic attachment points. Um, it was so hard to place them in the right areas, but and to look cool too at the same time. But literally, we have specific magnets to uh, match specific items. So, uh, like for instance, we might have uh, grenades on the right side, and the magazines on your waist, and like a holster for your gun on your right thigh. I think so. We have specific magnetic points for, especially for the military. Yeah, it's interesting. Something that looks kind of neat and futuristic in real life, like you know, a gun being stuck onto a chest or stuck onto a leg looks really kind of fake in video games because it's so easy just to stick junk right. onto a character. So like when you see, so it's definitely a careful balance. Right, to make right. It look, feel, feel good. Exactly. Um, okay. Um, so our next question comes from Farewell Red. Did you correct Mark Hamill's nose? As a character artist, you could also feel like a plastic surgeon. Um, no, we did not. Uh, this, that is an actual legitimate Mark Hamill scan. Uh, the texture to the, the geo, that is straight up Mark Hamill. Uh, we wanted to really capture the soul of Mark Hamill. And like, I tend to see a lot of games when they kind of fix scans and make it symmetrical and everything, they don't look as real. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, need, you need that off, that asymmetry. Um, and sometimes those weird things like uh, Owen Wilson's nose, like he won't look like Owen Wilson without that nose. So like there are specific things and, uh, but yeah, we, we, we kept it the same. And as a character artist, you could also feel like a plastic surgeon. I'm a character concept artist and I do that all the time. And actually that might not be a good habit, but like for instance, <laughs> The John Reese davies character, I made him a lot slimmer initially, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a very husky guy, but I made him look like uh, an Abercrombie model. And they're like, no, no, he's bigger than that. I was like, all right. So um, I, I do do that because um, I've been trained to draw like uh, visually pleasing. More idealized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, society. I mean, anyways, <laughs> that's a whole different topic. But um, yeah, as a concept artist, we, we, we want to make the images look very um, sexy, um, very visually pleasing. Um, so sometimes I do fix a lot of the imperfections. But specifically for the scans, no, that is actually it. Is Are we going to be like doing stuff like adding scars onto people and messing them up a little more? Um, I uh, don't quote me on this, but that is the plan, I think. Yeah. Hmm. And so, what what we're doing is kind of, uh, which kind of ties in to next question <laughs> from Amontillado. Will you be able to leverage the assets you've captured, created for your hero characters, into the player cre player character customizations? We know that we'll be able to blend between various predefined faces in order to create our own, for instance. Will these predefined ones include the hero's faces that you made for Squadron Like, 42? could you have Mark Hamill's nose? <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, the players will not have access to the uh, uh, celebrity A-list characters from this, what I've been told. Um, so no. But we have scanned hundreds. Including me. Yes, hundreds of individuals. And so you can blend between those. So potentially you could Frankenstein and Mark Hamill's nose <laughs> together if you want, I guess. But uh, you would have to, you can't just be like, oh, Mark Hamill's nose. You would have to construct it together with your creativity. It, I have to say, it was really awesome being able to be head scanned. It was one of my favorite experiences so far. When I was out in uh, England, I got a chance to sit in the chair and have all those cameras go off. And it was, it was really cool and really creepy to see a 3D version of my head rotating around. Mm -hmm. So hopefully all of you will be able to play using my enchanting eyes. Bunch of, bunch of mini wills <laughs> spotted right around the universe. Yeah, but like, uh, uh, I think uh, Metal Gear Phantom Pain, they had a similar customization type of thing. Um, can I do spoilers? Well, it depends on what they are. For the game, not for our game. Oh. If it's not for Star Citizen, you can fucking feel free. Oh, yeah. sweet. All right. I mean, so, I, I mean, I would say, like, uh, hey, you know, I'm about to spoil that. Okay. Maybe we'll put a spoiler tag yeah, spoiler up. Tag. Probably there will be nothing here again. Okay, so spoiler <laughs> figure. Um, spoiler. Uh, for Metal Gear Phantom Pain, there is a scene where uh, um, Snake has to have plastic surgery so that uh, the enemies won't recognize him, right? So I literally flipped the table. I was like, how dare you do this to my snake? Um, and so what I did was I customized the character for him to look exactly like the original <laughs> thing in the, anyway. So I literally spent like three hours. I printed a picture of Snake, slapped it on my TV, and made it almost exact. So, you, so kind of how that leads into your question is you could probably stitch something together with our, our, with our big database of scans to make the face that you want. So you might look like Mark Brown, but we won't be giving you those that specific asset. For we want to keep those reserved for yes. the special characters. That's correct. I mean, it would be weird, wouldn't it, if like in Squadron 42, Mark Hamill is, you know, mentoring you and you look like Mark Hamill. Is... Well, then you would just assume that he went to the same plastic surgeon as you did. <laughs> Especially picked out nose number four. Mark Hamill is a robot, everybody. <laughs> He's a clone. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah. now for the last question. S B U Sural. Spoosural. Spoosural. Yeah. Spoosural. Spoosural. When did the UEC move away from paper money? Or do they, do they still use some paper money? Is the star citizen economy tied to a gold standard? So UEC stands for United Earth Credits, and so that came among in the Messer era. Um, and I, we haven't quite known this number, but I believe it was always a, a digital currency, first and foremost, not attached to a gold standard. Uh, gold standard has been kind of abandoned for a long time. There's not that much gold around Bitcoin. to support an economy. Bitcoin? A little bit. Like most people are, are, are you know, need a, we've done stories about this, about how the difficulties of tracking digital currency across um, the systems when we have that lag in communications where you have to send the comma rate. So if you buy something at this convenience store in this system to notify your bank that you've spent that money, that kind of trip that information has mm. to take and how they handle it with local, um, you know, relay stations. So, you know, we've been talking about, you know, what are those kind of currency 
chips may look like, what are you collecting when you find currency. So there might actually be physical currency that you come around, which are basically non-transferable data things that mm -hmm. get stocked around versus kind of wiring. And, and those would be potentially more reliable in systems without comm relays versus right. kind of the more central areas where you can hook into the spectrum and be able to do transfers that way. Um, that is interesting. Like, what if I bought something, but it's literally like maybe 30 solar systems away. And so by the time the information reaches another solar system, there might be inflation. Well, we did a fun story about this bank robber who is basically going to all her banks and withdrawing money in each one and racing faster than the comm relays huh. could go. Uh -huh. And so they didn't know that she'd already withdrawn her money in the previous banks, which was kind of really fun. Oh, wow. um, so we have built in safety so that you can't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to have to uh, explore that. It, it, hopefully, you know, with 2.0, uh, the social module and the alpha getting some form of expenditure once the stores are online. We can start seeing how currency works more from the design aspect and then we'll update the lore uh, to address the needs and concerns of how people are interacting with the credits um, in game. So something you'll have to think about from a character design standpoint is all those pockets to keep your spare change. <laughs> Oh. Are, are we getting a, a fanny pack? Is that, is that in the pipe? That's, that, that's what it is. <laughs> the mar official Marine yes. CDS fanny pack to hold your extra clips of ammo. Approved <laughs> by me. <laughs> well, that wraps up this 10 for developers. We answered 10 questions with 10 answers. I think that worked out pretty well. Sometimes mm -hmm. more. I'd say we were about like 15 answers, to be honest. Yeah. And we have to thank, once again, all the subscribers for not only submitting these awesome questions, but for donating to make this show and others like it possible, as well as to thank all the backers, really, for letting us work on this amazing project. Thank you so, so much. It's been a dream come true so far, and I'm really excited about this game. Yeah. Thanks. See you around the verse. Hey guys, thanks for watching um, 10 for the Chairman. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, see more episodes, go here. If you guys would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and always keep up to date with all our video content, go here. And uh, if you guys would like to watch episodes of Around the Verse, go here, please. And I will see you in the verse. This video made possible by the ICC Stellar Surveyors and subscribers like you.